While I think we would all agree that GNOME is the most popular desktop environment, Plasma comes in a very close second. What I want to do today is actually talk about five reasons why you should try Plasma out. Now, I'm making this video because recently Plasma 6 came out and I can't be a Linux YouTuber and not make something about Plasma 6. So this is my initial video on Plasma 6 and a long-term review will come later. So let's just get that out of the way. So today, five reasons why you should use Plasma no matter what version it is. So let's go ahead and jump in. So let's actually take you first to my Plasma desktop. And this is Plasma 6. I'm not going to talk about the features of Plasma 6 or any of that. I'm going to talk more in general of why you'd want to use Plasma. So the first one and the most obvious one is customizability. So if we open up the settings application here, you'll actually see that there are a ton of settings. And this isn't really Plasma specific. Any KDE slash QT application is going to have a ton of options for you to tinker with. Basically, if you want to make your apps look or function in a certain way, you probably can. Now, there are probably some limitations if you're looking for something that is a little more esoteric, but the mainstream options are all here, including theming and changing the UI and all of this sort of stuff, right? And this is simultaneously a good and a bad thing for a lot of people, because one thing that is for sure true is that there are a ton of settings here. And because there are a ton of settings here, it's both very customizable and quite confusing. So if you're going to mess around with customizing your plasma, take advantage of that search box up there at the top because I tell you now, you'll be using it a lot. It'll make your life so much easier to find the things that you're wanting to look for. So customizability is the first one on the list. And I think that it had to be the first one on the list because it's the, absolutely the most obvious. The second one on the list is actually kind of connected. And I decided to separate it out because it is so important, at least for me, and that is theming. And I think that out of all the desktop environments, I don't think that it can be argued that KDE does theming the absolute best. On anything GTK based like GNOME or XFCE or Cinnamon, any theming that they do is kind of a hack, especially on GNOME where they really don't want you to theme at all. And on XFCE and Cinnamon and Mate and all the other GTK desktops, they all use a hack to get their themes to work for the most part, or they have very minimal theming through libadoeta, right? So the theming on other desktop environments isn't very good. On Plasma, theming is built in and fully supported. You can go to this page here and hit get new, and it'll actually show you hundreds, maybe thousands of themes made by the community and put on a basically a theme store that you can download and apply. A lot of them even have pre-configured desktop layouts that you can use so you can actually fully emulate the desktop you see in the screenshot. So it is very nice. And it even goes beyond pre-configured themes. If you want to create your own theme, you can do so very easily by just editing the colors. You can create your own color scheme. You can upload them from a file so you can back them up very easily if you want to transfer them from one machine to another. You can edit pre-existing themes and make them completely your own, however you want to do it. The amount of theming capability you have on Plasma is unmatched. It's just the premier feature of Plasma if you are a tinker who likes to theme their applications. So it's very, very good. The next one on the list is a little bit less about features and more about the community. So KDE, and I truly believe this, has the best desktop environment community out there. The GNOME guys are very isolated. The developers themselves don't interact as much with the community as you'd like. The other desktop environments are all very small teams, so they're not, they're not leading a project that is very big, so the community is usually pretty small. On Plasma, not only is the community very, you know, large, but the developers themselves are out and about. You can very easily contact a KDE developer. They all either have YouTube channels or blogs like Nate does, and you can easily talk to them. Like, you can go have a chat if you want to. Also, it's very easy to report bugs. It's very easy to get support on the forums. It's very easy to request features if you want to actually have to, you know, ask somebody for a feature to add into Plasma. You can do all of these things very, very easily. And a lot of that is because the developers are so 
here. They're they're very present, right? And, and it's very nice. It's, it's not an experience you get with other desktop environments very often. And it happens all the time with KDE. But even more than that, more than just the interaction you will get between the community and yourself, is their openness to how they're developing the desktop environment. So they're always, every week, coming out with a blog post that looks like this one here that basically says all the new features that they've added that week, all the UI improvements, all the bugs that they've fixed, and everything. It's very, very transparent. And the best part of that means that if you are a diehard KDE Plasma fan or you become one, you know what's coming up. You know what bugs have been fixed and when to update. All that stuff happens very much in the open. Again, not something that you can really say about GNOME, even though you can if you want to. You can go dig into what GNOME's doing, but they don't publish a lot of that stuff in easily digestible fashion. So openness and transparency and very good community is one of the best things about Plasma. The fourth one on the list is something that is not going to be for everyone, but I think that it's truly important. So if you are just coming to Linux or you're a Windows expat, even if you've been here for a while, one of the best things about Plasma is that it does have a fairly Windows-like UI. Now, it used to be much more Windows-like. Let's just put it out there. Before Plasma 6 came out, the bar didn't float. Okay, so in Windows, the bar doesn't float. And obviously, my UI here is not exactly the default UI, but it's very close. There is a floating bar along the bottom. There's a menu here along the side, basically what, like you'd get in Windows. And basically what this means is that anyone who is coming from Windows can come and use KDE Plasma without having to have too much upheaval in their look and feel. And this translates over to the applications as well. So if you open up an application, it looks kind of like Windows. You know, you have the buttons up here at the top. You have text and stuff along the side and menus. That's basically the, the Windows UI. Now, for a lot of people... This is a bad thing. I know in Plasma 6, one of the things that they wanted to do was kind of distance themselves from the Windows-like UI claim. They did that a little bit. They made the, pa the, the panel floating. They created much more in terms of how you edit it to make it more unique. So if you enter edit mode here, you get something like this. I'm not sure if hopefully you're actually still seeing this, but you get something like this. So in, in, in Plasma 6, some things have deviated from the Windows like UI thing, but there's still enough familiarity here in terms of default UI that you can come here and be very comfortable if you're coming from Windows. Now, this isn't unique to Plasma. Cinnamon does this, XFCE does this in some ways, depending on what distribution you're using, you know, so it's not unique to, to Plasma, but I think that in terms of default layout, Plasma has the best one, because if you go look for the default layout of, say, XFCE, it doesn't look very Windows-like, that's one thing. It's also very, very old looking. Now, the default layout of Cinnamon is much more Windows-like, so there's a lot of comparisons to be made there, but I think in terms of default layout, KD does have the best one, and because it does have so much customizability, once you get familiar with using Linux, once you get familiar with using this layout, you can very easily go into, you know, colors and themes and theme stuff. You can very easily move the panel up top or create a dock or whatever you want to do. Any number of things are are possible when you have that level of customizability, but the defaults are always very important because as much as it boggles my mind, the vast majority of people who use a desktop environment like this stick with the, the defaults. And that's okay if that's the way they want to do it, but having good defaults is a very good thing. The last one on the list is going to be a little controversial and it's going to maybe not be 100% true for everyone because I find that Wayland compatibility is not universal for everyone. I'm a prime example of this, that Wayland doesn't work for everyone all the time, but I found after using Plasma for a while that their Wayland implementation is by far the best. I had so many problems on GNOME, I've had problems with Wayland compositors on KDE, at least after the update to Plasma 6, it has been, been fantastic. And on top of that, if you have a multi-monitor setup, I find that Plasma has the best control over that situation, especially if your multi-monitor setup has 
monitors that aren't the same. So if you have like a 1080p and a really weird resolution like I have with a LG dual up that has kind of like a two monitor and one setup and it has a different resolution and it has a different refresh rate, you can go into the display configuration of KDE Plasma and do a ton of stuff including fractional scaling, changing the refresh rate, changing the overscan, and with Plasma 6 you can now also use an ICC color profile if you have one. So all of this stuff means that you can do a ton of customization on your monitor setup, something that is not as easy to do in other desktop environments. XFCE doesn't support it at all because it's still XORG, and a lot of the other desktop environments are just very, very early in their Wayland stages. In terms of GNOME, GNOME doesn't do fractional scaling at all. You can choose between 100 and 200. That's it. Now, they do have some experimental supports for fractional scaling in between those numbers, but it's still very experimental. It doesn't work very well. Also, from in my experience on GNOME, a lot of the UI elements of GNOME don't scale at all, like for whatever reason. Maybe I was doing something wrong. Who knows? But I found in Plasma, the Wayland compatibility for this situation in terms of multiple monitors is very very good so those are the top five reasons why i think you should use plasma there are probably many more and i'd like to hear those from you guys in the comment section below because i'm sure there are people out there who use plasma who have better reasons than just these five so leave those in the comment section below i'd love to hear from you you can follow me on mastodon or odyssey those links will be in the video description you can support me on patreon at patreon.com slash the linuxcast you can also head on over to the shop which has a whole bunch of awesome merchandise that goes directly to help support my channel. So that's available at shop at the linkscast.org. There you'll find hats and t-shirts and all sorts of stuff. Head on over there and check it out. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly, honestly do appreciate it. You guys are just absolutely amazing. Thank you so very much. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week and all that stuff. I'll see you next time.